we continue this topic on our, um, of our, um, godliness. Um, I, work, I work for a school in our, um, no, I'll, I'll come back into a moment. But there was this young man, our, um, he was our, um, at school and the teacher asked the, um, the kids, he said, where does God live? And everybody in the school was putting up their hand and one, one student says that God lives, our, um, God lives in heaven. Another one says that God lives here on earth. But there was a young man right at the back of the class, kept on waving his hand. And she said, Jimmy, what, why have you got to say, where does God live? And he said, Miss, God lives in my bathroom. And she said, what do you mean God lives in your bathroom? What do you mean? Well, she said, Miss, so, um, when, my, um, when my mom and my sister are in the bathroom for a long time, I can hear my dad knocking on the door saying, God Almighty, are you still in there? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. You know what you like as uh, sisters and, uh, and wives. We love you dearly. But there's sometimes I want to use the bathroom immediately. Praise God. Well, I won't go there. I want you to still love me. Praise God. Yeah, so um, I want to give you, um, we continue this journey on, on godliness. And today's going to be slightly different in our approach as the Lord leads us with the time that we have. But Jesus had a way of ministering, and I called it the, the, the side approach. He was able, sometimes he would speak, and then it would be followed by a showcase of his sermon. Sometimes he'd give an instruction, and it would be followed by an illustration. Other times he would make a declaration, and it would be followed by a demonstration. And there are other times he'd give an explanation, followed by an example or an exhibition. But sometimes he would do the very reverse. Instead of giving the message followed by a miracle, sometimes he would do the miracle followed by the message. In other words, it's a side approach. He would go from showcasing to show telling. He would go from an illustration to an instruction, or he may go from a demonstration to a declaration or from an example to an explanation. That was Jesus' ministry. He was able to go this side approach. So what I would like you to do, just quickly, if you could just stand with me, and we're going to ask God just to use this, that, um, stand with me, come change your posture, so I'll help you to stay awake a little bit, and just say with me, Lord, speak your truth, that I may showcase your truth. Say with me, Lord, speak your truth, that I might showcase your truth. Lord, instruct me with your truth. Come, speak with me. Lord, instruct me with your truth that I may illustrate your truth. Lord, declare your truth that I might display your truth. Lord, explain your truth that I might exhibit your truth. Your way, have your way. Praise God. You can be seated. So everything that you are hearing as a Christian and as a disciple of Christ Everything that is spoken into our lives, God wants it to be showcased to the world. That everything, how he instructs us, God wants us to illustrate that to the world. Why? Because I am the best thing, you are the best thing next to a Bible. Some people don't read the Bible, but they read your lives. So God wants everything that he declares as truth for us to display it in the world. That everything that is explained to us by him, that we would be examples of that truth. So that's where we're going today. Praise God. So the format for today, um, again, is going to be slightly a bit different. We're going to have a, a little bit of a demonstration through a video shortly. And also have a little bit of a debate and I'm going to come back and have a declaration of truth. So slightly a bit different than what we would normally do on a Sunday. Praise God. But um, I started off earlier um, saying I work at a school in um, Embarking. And I was just walking through the corridors and I saw this poster that the kids had done. And it really touched me and they were talking about Gandhi. And he says these two, they gave these two lines, um, live and learn. And it says that we should live as if you will die tomorrow, but learn as if you would live forever. And that really touched me. We should live as if we will die tomorrow, but we should learn as we will live forever. And while I was standing there, other thoughts came to my mind, and I've got, I call it the added extras. 
So as a Christian, we want to light up the world as if there was no light in the world. Fancy living like that. So we're living as if we will die tomorrow, that we're learning as if we would live forever, but also light up your, your area of influence as if there was no light there. And we should love as if someone's life depended upon it. What for else to live by? Praise God. So I wanted just to talk a little bit, as I said, I saw the quote by Gandhi. Uh, um, Gandhi, if you know his uh, um, history, do you know that he almost became a Christian? There's one time when he was actually interested in Christianity. But something had happened along the way that where he was attracted to Christ, but he was annoyed with the Christians. Where he was prepared to receive the principles of Christ, but reject the church. Something had happened where he was prepared to acknowledge Christ, but avoid the church. And I want to say something about what happened to him. And uh, um, something that I've written in your notes for you. That Gandhi was, um, uh, um, was shrewd enough to tell missionaries, I like your Christ, I don't like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. That's what he said. Why did he say that? Listen to his story. Um, Gandhi is one of the most respected leaders of modern history, a Hindu. Gandhi nevertheless admired Jesus and often quoted from the Sermon on the Mount. Once, when the missionary E. Stanley Jones met with Gandhi, he asked him, Mr. Gandhi, though you quote the words of Christ often, why is it that you appear to be so adamantly reject becoming his follower? Gandhi replied, Oh, I don't reject your Christ. I love your Christ. It's just that there's so many of you Christians are so unlike your Christ. Apparently, Gandhi's rejection of Christianity grew out of an incident that happened when he was a young man practicing law in South Africa. He had become attracted to the Christian faith, had studied the Bible and the teachings of Jesus, and was seriously exploring becoming a Christian. And so he decided to, to, to attend a church service. As he came up the steps of the large church where he intended to go, a white South African elder, emphasis on the elder, the elder of the church barred his way at the door. Where do you think you're going? You, where do you think you're going? The man asked Gandhi in a belligerent tone of voice. Gandhi replied, I like to attend to worship here. The church lead, the church elders snarled at him. There's no room for you or the likes of you in this church. Get out of here, or I'll have my assistant throw you down the stairs. From that moment, Gandhi said he decided to adopt what good he found in Christianity, but would never again consider becoming a Christian if it meant being a part of that church. In other words, there was no example given to him. He went there, and instead of receiving love from, in quotes, the so-called Christians, he's receiving rejection. Is that really exemplifying the Christ that we say we serve? And it actually put him off. Well, you say, well, he's got to account for his own salvation. I agree with all that. But the question is, if you go back to the screen, it says, am I a stumbling block or am I a showcase for Christ signposting the world to Christ? Only you can answer that. Am I a stumbling block to the God that I serve? Am I a stumbling block to my co-workers and to those who live in my community? When they look at my life, do they see the life of Christ? Don't answer too quickly. It's a sobering thought that we could actually be a stumbling block to somebody else. Instead of dis um, displaying godliness, we're showing, uh, um, uh, um, super, you know, we're just being pretending. Praise God. So am I a stumbling block or am I a showcase for Christ, signposting the world to Christ? So I'm going to show you this. Uh, we're going to see um, a video. And when you see the video, I want you to keep in mind those two questions, and they're in this sheet. 
how does the clip make you feel as a Christian? And how does the clip make you feel as a non-Christian? Two aspects. You might say to me, but, well, Brother Clinton, I'm a Christian. How do you want me to feel as a non-Christian? I want you to imagine yourself as a non-Christian. And if you are here and you're not a Christian, I want you to imagine if you were a Christian, how would this clip make you feel? So both things. Give us the lights and let's give the video. At Ogba Close. Huh? Ogba Close. So now here you bring me 500 naira. That was it now. You're a grace on that. So it don't do you. It is a big agency for Lagos. Oh, she. Madman. Hey, am I on my? Who do you think I am? You think I'm a learner? Hey, 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 From there to this place, say 500 naira. Bola T-shirt, where? You are stupid. Inconsiderate fool. Yeah, this woman, you are an evil woman, no? Eh? She you know. Me. What have I done to you to deserve this curses early this morning? Curses. Me. Curse you. Yes, now. You. Who are you? I've not started. If I want to curse you, I will start using na names like weary, Oloshi, madman, expressing unfortunate what? human being, poverty stricken man. Ah. I've not started. And besides, I cannot even waste my curse on a stupid, selfish man like you. Hmm. If not that, I'm in a good mood. If not that, I'm in a good mood. On no. a good day. Mm -hmm. On a very good day. Mm -hmm. Mama wash, eh? Ah. Olo she, mm -hmm. mad man. Mm -hmm. I hate cheating. I hate cheating in my life. But and I you mean, people like to cheat people. If you like, don't take this to naira. naira. I, I will pity you. This was not stupid was not man. Please let number 51. Query. Stupid man. Idiot. That is how you will die, oh. Because anybody that is stealing will die. And before tonight, he will die. Sir. No condition is permanent. Anyone who mocks you only reminds you that you need a change of state. And it's only Jesus that can give you a change of spirit. I know I need God. Pray for me, please. No, my brother. You only want to give your life to Christ. Yes, sir. I want to. I'm sorry, please. I don't know. I need to put this up. Hello. Um, at the junction, yeah, I'm winning the soul for Christ. Yeah, I'm almost sure. Where are you now? Um, I think you are three blocks away from me. Thank God, my evangelism team, they are coming right now. Even my leader, she's the one leading them to this place. I'm very sure by the time she, she you see her, she's going to pray for you. She will like, truly receive a change. God is the only God one. God bless that you. Will turn. Problem. Ah, ah, ah. You this witch. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. What, what, you what, what, what's what happening? You? This is Sister Christy, my superintendent evangelist. Eh? Yes. If she is a Christian, never will I give my life to Christ. <laughs> eh? Never. Cross, please, cross, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's my weakness. Weakness, my foot. Can I tell you something? This woman cannot pray for me because she cursed me with this same mouth. And you want this same mouth, you want to use this same mouth to pray for me and lead me to Christ? Never! I was waiting for you. Ah! Come and play for this man. Ah, sir. Hello? 
And the soldier said this after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Ah, my weakness has killed this man. Ah, God has lost his soul because of my mouth. Oh. I said that, Christy. I told you that this man will put you in trouble one day. I can't even. 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 If you could put the me back on the board. Now, I've purposely showed that. That's what I'm saying. Are we a stumbling block to the world? Uh, I pray you got the gist of what you just saw. And the question is, is that we're going around our lives every day as Christians. And yes, you may, it's easy when you're in the church and someone steps on my foot. Oh, I can say, bless you, Lord. Bless you. But when the world is getting on my nerves... And my children are getting on my nerves. The world is at me. Who is the real person that arises out of me? Because that is telling a story. It's telling a story. So I said the questions are that as a Christian then, how does that clip make you feel? And as a non-Christian, how does it make you feel? As I said, this is going to be very different today. So can you just go in groups of threes or fours? And I'll just trust for a minute. Just to ask that question amongst yourself, how does it make you feel as a Christian and how does it make you feel as a non-Christian? Now, if you're saying that, well, I'm not a Christian, how can I answer? I want you to imagine if you were a Christian, how would you answer that? And if you are a non-Christian, I mean, if you're a Christian and you want, and I'm saying as a non-Christian, how you would answer it, I want you to imagine. Please, just in the rows that you are in, that was good enough. So in the rows that you are in, or if it's just two. As I said, this is going to be very different today. Praise God. I know it's a, so, it's a sort of clip that are, um, raises lots of questions and issues in our minds. Praise God. Okay, brethren, thank you so much. Sorry to cut the conversation. And I, I know that it's short and, and that part of it is because of the time that I have. But it's doing exactly what I hope it would do. And it's causing you to talk. Do you know that oftentimes, sometimes when Jesus uh, preached, sometimes he didn't explain all his messages. He left you with the thought about what does it mean to you? And that way the Holy Spirit would take what you've seen or what you've heard and begin to speak to you. Even as I'm speaking, many messages and what you've just seen, many messages are going around in your mind. Now, my time is short, but at the same time, I do want to acknowledge anyone on this side that you were touched on any angle, you want to answer as a, a, a believer or as a non-believer. 
Anybody would like to say something on this side? Man, you had so much to say. Could you? <laughs> you have to keep it short for me. I think um, what um, the sister did not realize is that you know, the way God set his judgment is that as a child of God, if you spend all your, all your years being a committed Christian and the last minute you sin and you die in that sin, it's going to go to hell. So it's, it's not like maybe simply because we go to church or we, if we continue in habitual sin in whatever form, either telling a lie or cursing, it's somebody who is hell-bound himself. So the sister herself actually did that. If she was the one that died, it was the same thing. She would have gone to hell as well too. So which means that as Christians, it's not about just being nice when we come among ourselves and when we are outside, become something else. If we're doing that, we're deceiving ourselves. Thank you so much. So on this side, I'd like someone who is a non answering as a non-believer. What would your thoughts be as a non-believer? Oh, Ralph, thank you. You have to keep it short for me, don't you? Well, as, as coming from a, a non-believer's perspective, I would not, I repeat, and I say that with passion, I would not want to have anything to do with either the Christianity or either his, um, the, the, the lady's belief. I would not want nothing to do with it because I wouldn't even want her to touch me. I wouldn't want her to talk to me. In fact, when I see, yeah, I would not want nothing to do with her. God. So I'm glad I would have gone for more of your responses, so forgive me for the time. But so that's the question we've got to ask ourselves. The question is, am I being a stumbling block or am I showcasing and signposting people to Christ? I would read out these scriptures, but they're there in, in your notes. But as a stumbling block, am I living contrary to the Christ I say that I love? Am I living superficially, only having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof? Am I an authentic Christian? Now, as an authentic Christian, it doesn't mean that I won't make mistakes. We're living in a real world. And sometimes showing that we are real people helps people to understand that there's hope for them as well. But the point is, is that am I just playing up a front? Am I just superficial living? Am I living to please myself at the expense of others? Jesus said these words. He said that the Father is with me always because I do those things that please him. Am I living for myself? Am I a stumbling block? Or am I showcasing and signposting people to Christ? Am I exposing who Christ is, revealing the character of godliness in a godless world? Am I expressing Christ in everything that I do, in my thinking, in my speaking, and the way I live, and the way I conduct myself? You see, you're not here. You see, I, I hear, and when you think about it, and we have this discussion at work, we spend most of our waking hours at work. Most of our lives is spent at work than the people that we love. Now, in my office, there's many women in my office and I, I, say to, I say to them, you know, I spend more hours with you and I hope that Veronica isn't jealous. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So I've got to conduct myself now as a Christian with a God. I see. You see, you don't see me at work. Veronica, my wife, and my children don't see me when I'm at work. They don't see me when I'm on the road or I'm in the bank. But God's eye sees me. God's eye sees you and I. So am I exposing Christ? Am I expressing Christ? Am I exemplifying Christ being an example of the ambassador, the Lord being over my life? Am I his ambassador? Praise God. I'm going to kind of wind down a little bit. If the choir could just make their way to the, um, to the stand for me. You see, we have Moses there and came out of, um, of God's presence with his face shining. When you come out of God's presence on a Sunday morning, when you come out on a Wednesday evening, 
and you come out here on a, on a Friday evening and to the, all, to the prayer meetings and your own private devotion, when you come out of that, is your life shining? Are you lighting up the world that is in darkness? The Bible says, let your light so shine before men, not, not speak a sermon to them, though there's a place for that. But he said, let your light so shine that they might glorify my Father which is in heaven. That they would see something of our lives, of the Christ that we serve. That they would see something of our lives, of the Christ that has forgiven us and drawn us into salvation. Moses came out with his presence shining. You can play in the background for me. Came out shining. You know, when we come out of God's presence, are we shining up? the world with God's presence for, uh, and, and with his fragrance. Jesus said these words. He said that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisee, look at the Pharisee, look how they lived, look how they regulated and kept to the law, look how they looked so pious. But God says that unless my righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisee, I have no part in the kingdom. In other words, my living must go beyond the external. Go beyond the big Bible that I say I carry. <laughs> the Bible must be in my heart. The Pharisees lacked, many of them lacked a relationship with God. They were doing all the external, but the internal was dead. Dead man bones. No reality. I want reality in my life. We need the reality of God. God said, unless, Jesus said, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisee, you have no part in the kingdom. You see, godliness is all about exposing and expressing and exemplifying the characteristics of Christ. That's what it is. Do they see Christ in you? Do they see Christ in you? Raise me a song, raise me.